When I first saw ads for the Final Fantasy X Kabuki, I thought there was no way this could possibly be good. After all, movie adaptations of video games tend to be terrible, so why would a play be any different? I'm not aware of any other video game based stage performances, but I have seen clips of plays based off anime, and let's just say there's a reason why I've never bothered to watch more than those few clips. I also have my objections to the corporate takeover of the traditional arts. A few years back, the school I was teaching at went on a field trip to watch a play. Which play did the teachers decide would be best to expand their students' cultural horizons? Disney's Aladdin. But I digress. The listed ticket prices were really expensive. The normal price for a standard seat was 28,000 yen, or about 210 US dollars. The absolute cheapest tickets were about 20,000 yen, or 150 US dollars. I wasn't planning to watch it at those prices, but I was able to get a 30% off coupon, and I figured I'm either blowing my entertainment budget for the next few months on Final Fantasy X, or I'll force myself to go to a few concerts that I don't really care about for reasons I'll probably talk about in another upcoming video. So I bit the bullet and bought the ticket. But if I wanted to get my money's worth, I'd have to study because Kabuki is notorious for being impossible to understand, even for native Japanese speakers. It's kind of like Shakespeare for native English speakers. I've seen about 20 minutes of a Kabuki show once before in the standing room only part of the National Theater in Ginza, and sure enough, I couldn't understand a word of what was going on. I figured the least I could do was review the Final Fantasy X storyline so I'd at least have some clue what was going on from context. First I watched a 40 minute recap video, then I watched another 40 minute recap video, followed by a 4 hour recap video, and then another 40 minute recap video, but this time in Japanese so I could get my terminology straight, and finally I watched several videos on the official Final Fantasy X Kabuki YouTube channel. Ideally, I would have had more time to learn about the basics of Kabuki, but I'll save that for whenever I watch my next Kabuki performance. The theater wasn't the National Theater in Ginza, but a high-tech, cutting-edge theater called IHI Stage Around Tokyo, located near the Toyosu Fish Market. It boasts a 360-degree stage, so while actors are performing on one part of the stage, they'll set up another part of the stage and rotate it in when necessary, so there's minimal downtime between scenes. There are also video screens surrounding the stage that are used for integrating computer graphics into the show. Some of the CG was taken straight from the game, while some was original to the show. The show itself was about 7 hours long. If you add in the break time, it was about 9 hours long. Started around noon, ended around 9pm. I'd call it a marathon, but those generally finish in half the time. The show was split into two acts, with an hour long break in between, and each of the acts had some short breaks in the middle. It was possible to buy tickets for individual acts rather than the whole show. This is a popular option for traditional kabuki, but at this show, it seemed like just about everyone watched both acts. At the beginning of the show, the narrator asked two questions. Who in the audience has never watched kabuki? And who in the audience has never played Final Fantasy X? About two-thirds of the audience had never watched kabuki, which was kind of expected, but surprisingly, about one-third of the audience had never played Final Fantasy X. It seemed like a significant chunk of the audience was taking this seriously as a work of kabuki rather than as a gimmick to draw in younger audiences to a dying art form. Some of the people even showed up in kimonos, which was kind of balanced out by the people in chocobo and moogle t-shirts. The costuming was overall more modern than traditional. Some of the costumes lend themselves to traditional Japanese dress like Orin, Yuna, and the Ion Yojimbo, while others like Titus and Waka had no traditional spin on their appearance aside from maybe some kabuki style makeup. The Ronzo characters looked like they were just wearing muscle suits, and so did Jekt, which did little to convince the audience that he wasn't just fat. The casting seemed to be based not so much on resemblance to the original characters, but on the actors' resumes. I didn't know anything about them beforehand, but apparently they were an all-star cast from famous acting families going back generations. The random background characters were also impressive, some of them were really acrobatic. My favorite was the ninja looking guy who runs around the background handing everyone their weapons and their other props. I assume that's a kabuki staple. Of course, this being kabuki, the performers were all male. Yes, even Riku, even Yuna, even Lulu. That's why I'm kind of glad my seat wasn't all that close to the stage. From a distance, they all looked female enough, and aside from Riku's voice at times, they sounded female enough. 
You know, all you hear coming out of the US these days is drag queen this, drag show that. Meanwhile, in the past year alone, I've watched all male kabuki and all female takarazuka, which are both widely respected as artistic and classy. Now, much like the costumes, the language was also mostly modern. Character introductions used old fashioned Japanese, and some of the older characters were a bit difficult to understand, but overall, I had no trouble following along. Also, thanks in part to all those recap videos I watched before watching the show. The music was extremely well done. Most of it was pre recorded remixes of the FFX soundtrack with traditional Japanese instruments, and not only was it not bad, but several of the tracks actually sounded better that way. In a few scenes in the second act, there were live musicians playing traditional instruments like the shamisen and the old fashioned flute and drums, whatever they're called. The music was particularly amazing in the final fight. In the video game, the final fight with Yu Yevon is kind of understood not to be challenging, but just kind of business you need to take care of to wrap up the story. In the play, they brought out all the eons in traditional kabuki costumes and they went all out with the live music and traditional dancing. It was really worthy of a final fight. I kind of expected the fights and the action in general to suck because obviously they're limited by what you can physically do on stage, but they kind of own it and don't bother trying to make the fights look as realistic as possible, rather these fights are more like interpretive dances, and it's surprisingly fun to try to imagine which video game moves correspond to which onstage movements. Okay, this might seem kind of trivial, but something else I really liked about this show was just how intuitive the clap timing was. I've been in Japan for almost 9 years now and I still never know when to clap for anything. I just wait until everyone around me starts clapping and then I join in. But for this show I kinda had it figured out. You clap when the major characters first appear, you clap after their second sort of kabuki neck jerk, you clap at the end of scenes, overall it felt pretty natural. One of my few complaints about the show is that it didn't feel traditional enough, at least to match my mental image of what kabuki is. The final fight scene is kind of what I was expecting for the whole show. and. Only the actor for Sid regularly delivered the kind of acting that I was expecting. He's 72 years old and I couldn't understand him at all, but he had tremendous stage presence. Of course, I'm not going to complain too much because all the modern twists made the performance a lot easier to understand, but most of the show felt like a modern play with some kabuki elements rather than true kabuki, whatever that's supposed to mean. Of course, I'm the farthest thing from a kabuki expert, so I'll have to watch a standard kabuki performance again sometime to see if my complaint has any validity. There were some slight deviations from the video game, which is inevitable when you're adapting a 50 plus hour RPG, but given that the show was 7 hours long, it certainly didn't feel rushed or incomplete, and perhaps its sheer length is what made it much better than your typical video game movie. Some of the changes I wholeheartedly supported, others were kind of questionable. To name a few of the changes, they skipped the first scene when Titus meets Riku, which I was okay with. They gave Seymour some extra background scenes not from the video game, and once again that was fine. They gave Orin a solo rematch versus Unaleska, which was awesome. And for one of the negative changes, Yu Yevon was floating around on one of the screens and talking for some reason right before the final fight. I thought that was dumb, but the ensuing fight was so good that I'm willing to overlook it. Overall, it was a tremendous production, and it did what I thought would be impossible. It made me both enjoy and understand a kabuki performance. Perhaps I'm only rating it this high because my expectations were so low, but final grade, triple plus. And finally, as you can see in the background over here, let me adjust the camera, I got a new poster up in the background which came with my ticket. It'll be the spiritual stand-in for my old Titus figure, who appeared with me in the first few episodes of Taco Raptor and then disappeared because I didn't get the good ending in Final Fantasy X-2.